operation. While being a single mom, I deserve a pay raise. You have a child. Yeah. I usually get kind of an asexual vibe. You're under arrest for insider trading. Michelle, don't struggle. Shut him up. You're bankrupt. All your accounts have been frozen. Claire, get me a new lawyer. You don't have any money, you stupid ginger. I wanted to ask you, I know that you're into fashion and everything, and talk to me about making Michelle's look with the <sighs> turtlenecks Dreamy. and the jewelry and the power suits. It was, I mean, for me, it's like, there's so, how a character, I have a weird thing that when I really know a character and I, I immediately kind of see them. I know how they look, what their cadence is, what their hair looks like. Hair. I, I get that wig going first off. But I started Michelle Darnell about 15 years ago at the Groundlings Theater. So it's a character I have been with for a long, a long, long time. So I've had a lot of time to think of it. And even when I did her at the Groundlings, she had that shock of spiky red hair. I wore my turtleneck up here. <laughs> I just thought it was, I love those women that like pick a look. They loved it. They felt, whenever the look was born, that day they felt amazing and they they were like, that's it. I look great, I feel great, I'm not changing for the next <laughs> 30 years of my life. And I kind of love that, right or wrong, in style, out of style. I love someone who dresses for themselves and that's what was really uh, important about Michelle and what was crazy is that, you know, you can do so many tricks, especially on camera where it's like, this piece is really nice, but then the rest are like mid-range. You don't have to get expensive stuff. You can, I mean, I usually put so many different things together to make. Michelle liked her nice things. Like she was always, we finally were like, I think she just always likes to be in charmeuse. Like everything was always like silky and slinky and a lot of like St. John's and those turtlenecks were, just made me laugh. And then once we started making the big bows, and then I psychotically said, can we fill the bows with organza <laughs> to really make them like, because something about Michelle, I thought, oh, her bows probably wouldn't droop. Like if she's wearing a bow, I wanted it to be almost, you know, jazz hands. Right. And uh, I thought her bow should be as strong as she is. And then, you know, I remember the first time I came on set for the scene where we walked down the street and I had that huge white bow on that, People were just like, you're, yeah, an sure. you're like, you're an idiot. I'm like, thank you. I love it. And then by the end of it, I was like, all of this makes sense to me. Like, so, I feel like I should always be like, sw like wrapping myself in something with a big bow. So I'm curious, you um, have like a gift for dropping F-bombs, like it's your sworn duty. And you make it look real good. I do not in life, for the, for the record, <laughs> I do not. Well, but you also, you've shown with your TV work on Gilmore Girls and Mike and Molly, you can do a lot more friendly, yeah. family-friendly comedy. Is there one that you prefer or? No, it's usually always character driven to me. We originally, it's funny, when we originally wrote The Boss, it was PG. And then it was kind of uh, just all these different things. All, it just kind of developed into, into what it was. and. I think at least for Michelle Darnell, part of her using like stronger language and which was very strange to do in front of kids. I have two kids. I was they didn't seem to care. Their parents were like, We know the deal, we've read the script. I was horrified. I was always like, I'm so sorry. Don't use this. There's better choices of words in the world. Like <laughs> I was always like, think of all the lovely ways to say they were like, We get it, we get it. But um Something about her doing that to me was really specifically important because it, it is that thing of someone who doesn't know what's appropriate. Mm. They're so self-driven and self-important and they certainly don't know anything about children. I mean, it is that kind of person that, and you, we've all met people that when you see them around children, it's like, it's like a weird historic, like prehistoric animal walks. I mean, they're truly like uncomfortable. And I thought she would not even have any hesitation of using that language in front of them because right. she doesn't think about them one way or the other. And I, that's, that's kind of why for her, I was like, I think she's got to drop some strong language in front of them just so she can, I thought it was a good way to show that she just, the world does not exist outside of here. I have to wrap with you, but if I can give him one quick yeah, question. Yeah, for sure. What is it like for you all these years to see this Gilmore Girls reunion actually happening? I think it's fantastic. I think it's fantastic, and I think I think it's long overdue, and I can't wait to see it. Yeah, yeah, I think it's going to be terrific. I'm excited. Yeah, thank you.